Assalamu alaikum. Can you all hear me? Just, just please confirm if you can hear me. Yes, you can hear me. That's good. Thank you very much. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى أهل بيته التجبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and thank you very much for joining this annual webinar on Arbaeen for the last few years الحمد لله Almighty Allah has blessed us to conduct this webinar on Arbaeen and we have a number of participants who participate on the law. We really hope and pray that you will find this webinar useful. It is interactive so you can ask questions. What we will suggest is that perhaps after you can see there are 27 slides or 25 slides. The last two slides are just uh, empty. So there are 25 slides. What I'll do after five, six slides, I'll just pause to answer questions. Try to keep your questions relevant to what we are discussing. If you have some person, personal situation, especially, uh, for example, situation, then we advise you to either text us or email us. No? And then, inshallah, we'll try to answer. Or perhaps you can leave it at the end. No? But uh, just try to uh, seek clarification regarding what we are speaking or something which you find is very important regarding your trip. No? So as we said that you like, we are going to discuss about the significance and etiquette of ziyarat, of no, shoda in Iraq. No? That means... The, five, the six Imams, you know, there are 12 Imams, 14 Masumin, right? So six of these Masumin, six Imams are buried in Iraq alone, right? Imam Hussein, Imam Ali, Imam Ali Islam Najaf, Imam Hussein in Karbala, then you got in Kazimain, the seventh Imam and the ninth Imam, and then you got in Askariyain, in, you know, in Samarra, the tenth Imam and the eleventh Imam, right? It's almost like you know, in Medina. In Medina, for example, we've got six Masumin, we've got the Prophet, 
we got uh, maybe Fatima Zahra, and then we got four Imams. The second Imam, the fourth Imam, the fifth Imam, the sixth Imam. So like there are six Masumin buried in Medina, in the same way there are six Masumin buried in Iraq. The difference is Medina is just one city, Iraq is the entire country. But there are six Masumin buried there, right? One of the Masum is buried in Iran, the eighth Imam, and twelfth Imam, of course, is living. May Allah no hasten his appeal, inshallah. So we'll discuss about the you know, ziyarat, about etiquette and significance. When we say shahada, because we have said shahada because it's not only imams, but even the shahada of Karbala, like Al-Yakbar, Al-Yaskar, Janab Abbas, right? We are going to, inshallah, visit them also, so keep that in mind. So those of you who are actually planning to go on ziyarat, and I believe that, oh, I'm sorry that this Arabic is not clear here, but in any case, we've got, uh, I didn't realize that it has changed as we... You know, uh, uploaded the slide and it was changed. I didn't realize it. Uh, my apologies. But in any case, we'll just uh, look at uh, the Arabic or well, English part of it. That those of you who are going for ziyarat, it is in, in fact you are very fortunate, as you will see that there are so many, you know, significance and hadith regarding what uh, going to uh, Iraq for ziyarat, especially Arbain. So regarding Ziyarat of Arba'in, there is a popular hadith from the 11th Imam, Muhammad Asqar al-Islam, and this is found in many books, including Mafat al-Jinan, but we have taken it from the original source. The book is Kitab al-Mazar of Sheikh al-Mufid, you know, whereby he says that the signs of you no know, believers are five, you know, Alamat al-Mumin al-Khamsa. He says signs of believers are five. One is saying 51 rakat of prayers. This refers to the wajib prayers, which are 17 rakats, and then 34 rakats, which is muster, exactly double, you can see. 70 rakat is wajib, and just times two is muster rakat. This is the nafila of the daily five prayers and third salat. The nafila of fajr is two, the nafila of zor is eight, the nafila of asr is eight, right? So eight and eight, 16 and two, 18. The nafila of maghrib is four, that makes 22. Right, and then nafil of Isha is two, but since we say in the state of uh, sitting, it is one. So this 23, and then Amaz is 11, so 24, 34, right? And nafil of Fajr is two rakat, no? So keep that in mind that this is 34 rakat together, which is uh, uh, Musta. If somebody decides 51 rakats a day, that is a sign of a believer. Now, you know, many of us cannot, cannot do that. But I would recommend that you no, know, those of you who are, for example, semi-retired, or those of you, for example, a good time, at least try to do it once a week, say on Friday or Sunday or Saturday. If you start that habit of reciting 51 rakat once a week, then fine. But even if you cannot do 51, for example, whatever you can. For example, Nafir of Zor is 8 rakat, right? Nafir of Asr is 8 rakat. If you can't do eight rakats, you can even do six. That means, no, three namaz of two rakats. If you can't do six, just do four. If you can't do four, for example, just do, for example, let's say that you have taken off from your work or from your studies and you want to say Zohar and Asar namaz, and then you have got some time. So you can only do two rakat nafila. That's fine. At least do two. There's a very beautiful saying in Arabic. They say, if you cannot do everything, do not leave everything. So for example, if you cannot do all 51 rakat, doesn't mean that you don't do all or no, at all. So keep that in mind. The second, of course, sign of a believer is Ziyat of Arbaeen. Ziyat of Arbaeen is a sign of a believer, you can see. How important it is that the 11th Imam has mentioned, and this is 11th Imam, as you know, after that, the 12th Imam came, who went to Ghaybat immediately after the Shahadat of the 11th Imam, right? So Imam, of course, keeping in mind, as time will come, as Shias are going to face difficult kind of challenges, he had mentioned Ziyat Arbain specifically. Perhaps to keep that you no know, the message of Imam Hussein alive in different ways. Although, although we remember Imam Hussein in the 12 days of Muharram, we remember Imam Hussein often, but even especially mentioned Ziyat of Arbain as a sign of believer would make people to make an effort for that, right? Wearing a ring on your right hand. Usually there's a taqattum bil yameen, right? People, you can of course, it's only allow, also allowed to wear the ring on the left hand. But it is Muslim to also wear, especially a sign of a believer to uh, wear the ring on the right hand. If you have several rings, several rings, for example, and you cannot wear all of them in right hand, 
then of course you will take one of the ring on the right and other on the left. That's fine. But make a point that at least there is one ring on your right hand, right? Putting your forehead, al-tafir al jameen that means on on the clay, on the on the on the, on the you no. Know, it's important that you no know, when we say our salat, you keep your head on a turba or on a clay, right? Forehead. This is also a sign of believer. And this is important because a believer is deferred. There are Muslims, as you know, they no longer say their salat on on the clay. They do their salat on carpet, on the clothes, or anything. We don't do that, right? So this is a special sign of a believer, you can see. Again, and especially if, you, if since many of us do our sajda on turba, that means that again connects to Karbala. Besides Arbaeen, you can see how much Karbala in the events of Karbala are important. The two of the five signs have connection with Karbala. One is Arbaeen, right? And then putting the forehead on Turba, which is from Karbala, right? You can see how important Karbala is. It's so central to the believers. People don't realize this thing, how important Karbala is, right? And then fifth is saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim with a raised voice. It was, in fact, the practice of Amir Mumineen, Imam Ali al-Islam, to always say Bismillah in Namaz with a raised voice. Now, as you know, that there's a masala, right, which says that when you say the kirat, the recitation in the first and second rakat of surah, when you say in the Zohar and Asr Namaz, we are supposed to say ikhfatiya, we are supposed to lower the voice. You must have noticed Imam, when he's leading the Namaz Jamaat, he would not say the surahs with a raised voice, right? Even in those namaz, in Zohar and Asr namaz, although you see your surahs in the lower voice, in the voice so low that only a person standing next to you can hear you, but when it comes to Bismillah ar-Rahman, make a point that you do it a raised voice, okay? It should be a raised voice. So keep that in mind that this is the sign of a believer. Always, whenever, for example, even wherever you are, you say your wajib namaz, you say sunnat namaz, you are saying nafila namaz, you are saying tahajjud salat. Bismillah ar-Rahman should be said. Of course, don't raise it so much that it disturbs others. Let's say, for example, if you are saying nafila namaz in, in a masjid, right? So you can say this bismillah, with little raised voice. You no, know? That means there's a difference between that and the other recitation. So these are the signs of a believer, according to you know, Ilayon Imam. One of them, of course, is going for ziyarat. And you are really fortunate that many of you I know, I can see from the name, you are heading to Iraq this year. It's really unfortunate. I've been to uh, Arbain Ziyarat a number of times, during the time of Saddam also, and also after Saddam's fall. And of course, I found it really beneficial, and, and also it was spiritually helpful. Keep in mind that Arbain is not the only occasion which is highly recommended to go for Ziyarat. Though there are occasions not maksus, no? Special occasions to visit Karbala. You can go to Karbala any time during the year especially any Thursday. So brothers and sisters, when you are there, try to make, if you are in Iraq, and if it is Thursday, see if you can go back to Karbala. Let's say, for example, on Thursday you are in Najaf, right? So just take a taxi or go back to, uh, take a cab, go to uh, Karbala on Thursday evening and go back to Najaf on Friday, for example. If you are in Kazamain, no, if you are anywhere in Samarra, the fortunate thing is that from Samarra, from Kazamain, from Najaf, Karbala is not that far. It's not that far, no? So you can easily. So Thursday, of course, is very important. But besides Thursday, there are five special occasions mentioned in the Hadith. You know, highly emphasized. And hum Alhamdulillah, I've been with all these occasions except the day of Arafat. Just pray, since so many of you are going there, please pray that I can go to Iraq also on the day of Arafat. So these five occasions are, of course, the day of Arbaeen as we are going, right? The day of Ashura. It is also mustahab to be in Iraq on the day of Ashura, you know, 10th of Muharram. Middle of Shaban, Nime Shaban, 15th of Shaban also is highly recommended that you go there. There's a special hadith we are going to share with you. The day of Arafah also, right? Very much. In fact, one of the hadith says, I will not mention here just now because we need a space to put a lot of hadith. But says that no, Allah looks at the zawar of Imam Hussein on the day of Arafat before he looks at the zawar of no, before he looks at the hajis on the, in Arafat. 
You know, in fact, Arafat is so important part of Hajj. The Hadith says, Arafat, no Hajjul. Arafat, he Hajjul. That means Arafat is Hajj. You know, al Hajju Arafat. That means Hajj is actually the day of Arafat. But even then, Allah first looks at his mercy at the Zawar of Imam Musayyid on the day of Arafat, right? That, which is the 10th of the Hajjah. And then middle of Rajab, right? So these five occasions, those of you who are going for the first time for Ziyarat, pray that you be given opportunity to go back on those days. Those of you who have been to Ziyarat in different occasions, and you are going now again Arbaeen, you are fortunate. Those of you who have been to Arbaeen, again going Arbaeen, which is fine, but make a point. Now try to adjust your schedule such that you can also go to visit Imam Hussain on other days. So two hadiths will share with you. One is from Imam Has no, Abu Hassan al-Rida, Imam Ali al-Rida al-Islam. He says he was asked this question by somebody, Ibn Abi Nasr. He asked the Imam, Imam Rada al-Islam, in which month should we visit and perform the ziyat of Imam Hussain? Imam said, in the middle of Rajab and in the middle of Shaban, you can see. And this hadith is found in Tahzib. Tahzib is, Tahzib al-Ahkam is the book which is after Al-Kafi. You know, the Shias have four important books. One of them, the most important is Kafi. Then comes Tahzib al-Ahkam. In Tahzib al-Ahkam, volume six, you know, page number 48, this hadith is found. Also Misbah, you know, Al-Tahajjud, you know, also has this hadith in volume two, page 807, you can see. So during the ziyarat in the month, in the middle of Rajab, in the middle of Shaban also is highly recommended. So as I said, if you go there, pray that you are given opportunity to go again during those days. Abu Hamza Sumali, a great companion of the fourth Imam and the fifth Imam, right? He says, I heard Ali ibn Sain saying, that means he says Imam al Abidin saying this thing. Whoever wishes to shake hands with 124,000 prophets, then let him visit Imam Hussain, Al Hussein on the 15th of Shaban. You can see, we can say Imam Hussein or Al Hussein. Al Hussein is very important because that is how he's known in the hadith and also in the books. Keep that in mind. So let him visit Al Hussein Al Islam on the 15th night of Shaban. Surely the angels and the souls of prophets seek permission of Allah to visit him on this night. And they are granted the permission. So even the angels, you can see, and the prophets of Allah, that means the souls of prophets of Allah, the arwah of prophet, anbiya, even they go and seek the permission from Allah. They told Allah, give us permission that we go and do zayat of Imam Hussain on the 15th night of Shaban. You can imagine how important it is, right? Fortunate is he who shakes the hands with him, and they shake hands with him, right? From them are the five other Azam prophets, Nu, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Rasulullah, right? So you can imagine that even these five old Azam Pagambal, they also are there, the Arwa is there in Karbala on 15th of Shaban, right? And then I asked, why have they been named Ul Azam? He replied, because they were sent to inhabitants of the east and the west of the earth and to the jinn and the humans, right? This is a good question. Maybe perhaps in Madrasa you must have learned, right? That why these five are known as Ul Azams. Abu Hamza Sumali says, I asked the fourth Imam, and he said that because they were sent to the inhabitants of the east and the west, that means they are universal prophets, you know, and also to the jinn and the humans, right? Keep that in mind. We go to the next slide. Again, there was Arabic here somehow. This is the first time we are facing this thing. The only way is, of, of, perhaps we should have just PDF uh, format of the slide, but inshallah we learned it. Now keep this in mind, because we said five qualities of a believer, you may say that sometimes, for example, from the member, or if you, for example, Google nowadays, or if you got, for example, a software which has hadith, if you say five qualities, no, khamsa alamat al mumin So there also another hadith, again, from the fourth imam. I'm just sharing this with you because... It should not happen, for example, if you find a different hadith, then say, okay, does this mean that the other hadith is wrong? There is no conflict, no? This itself shows that this also are important, right? So the fourth imam says the qualities of believer are five. So I asked which are those. No, Tawu says, I asked the no, hotel. He said, piety in privacy. Now, when you are 
alone. This is very important. I can see one of the young person here who's going to Zara also attending today. You know, when people who are young and when they are alone, sometimes they feel that, no, we can just do wrong. Nobody's watching us, right? Iman says, no, alwara fil khalwa. No, that means when you are all alone, even at that time, you have good consciousness. You think that although I'm alone, my parents are not watching me, nobody's watching me, let me do wrong. No, but you know that Allah is watching you. So being pious when you are alone, right? Giving charity despite having little. Sometimes people feel that no, only the rich people should give charity. Even if you have limited funds, give whatever you have. I remember when I was in Florida in 2007 and eight. There was that uh, financial you know, melting, right? A lot of people lost their investments. The houses' values went down. People who had invested in their stocks, everything went down drastically. Huge fall was there in 2008, those who realized. No? At that time, they came to us and said, that, uh, give us some kind of dua, what we can do. And I told them, give charity. And they said, are you out of your mind? Molana, we are already having less money and you are telling us to give. I said, yes. Even if you've got less money, give, because that is going to attract the mercy of Allah. So keep in mind that not only rich people give, even if you've got limited funds, you give, right? Patience at the time of difficulty. When you go to Musiba, right? Even at that, that time, you've got, for example, Sabah. Sabah in the Musiba. No, Hadith says the Arabic is Sabah in the Musiba, right? So when sometimes a person is difficulty, even then you have patience. No, you keep in mind you know, that you know, when people are difficulty, the best thing is. Never complain to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, if you have a problem, if you are sick, if you've got certain kind of problem, then you can talk to your doctor. That is fine. Or for example, you have certain, let's say somebody, your, your creditor, right, is harassing you. And you know that somebody in the community is a friend of that creditor. So that's fine. You can tell him, can you just use your influence to tell him to give me extra time? But other than, for example, small difficulties here and there, just talk to Allah. Allah, you know, is listening. Inshallah, will resolve the problem. No? Forbearance at the time of anger. Al-Hilm and al-Ghadab, right? When this person is even angry, at that time, he still has the Hilm. Hilm is, for example, that you know, your forbearance. You know, for example, that somebody has done wrong to you, somebody was mean to you. Now he or she is coming to you for some, for some, some kind of favor. You don't just show anger. You still show your forbearance and try to help out, right? So forbearance is a time of anger, no? Because people sometimes angry, they just try to speak out their mind. They start saying so many things which otherwise they would not say. They should not guess. And then finally, Imam says, saying of truth at the time of fear. So this is also hadith I just shared with you because I don't want, for example, somebody to say that no, you are telling that there are five signs of hadith. But of believers, and why we have found different hadith. This hadith also is from the fourth imam, the other hadith was from the eleventh imam. But there is no kind of what conflict between them. So you can combine, for example, all these five and five. You know, perhaps you know those that hadith you can see the of eleventh imam has to do more about the Shia, right? For example, if you talk about you know what uh, um, Arbaeen, only the Shias go for. If you talk about, for example, wearing a ring, right? Or kick, Shias do. If you talk about, for example, doing sadda on, on the uh, turba, again, Shias do. If you talk about raising the, say, Bismillah, you know, with a raised voice, the Shia do. In 51 Rakat, of course, as you will see, we'll discuss later on that, the, you know, in the events of Karbala, we are told that the Hadul you know, Bayt, in spite of all the difficulties, they never left the namaz is sharp. And they never left the nafila, right? So perhaps that is to do with that. And this is the, the, what fourth Imam is saying is more to do about spirituality, you know. But these two hadiths, they do not conflict. So just keep in mind. You know? So we are on the sl slide number four. After the next slide, I will pause for some questions for what we have said so far. Now, this is just our sh sharing with you only three hadiths. Brothers and sisters, you know, I'm sure you must have heard, going to Karbala has so many benefits. It's amazing. It carries so much sawab. No. 
that uh, that's why you can see people go in big number and people go often. In fact, the Hadith says, if you can afford to go to Karbala, don't miss going every four years. Keep this in mind. Inshallah, those of you who are going this year, you may, may, may you reach there safely. But keep in mind that if Allah has given you and you have the ability, you can afford to do that. At least every four years, make a point. No? I have not been there for the last three years, but inshallah, this year I'm planning to go in December, inshallah. So I'll complete that within four years, right? See what the Imam Sadiq says. One who thinks he's a Shia, but does not perform the Ziyad of Imam Hussein before. Now here we say Ziyad does not mean Ziyad Arbaeen. Any, any Ziyad, but any for, for Ziyad of Imam Hussein, it means visiting Imam Hussein in Karbala. Before his death, he's not a Shia. Even if he is, of, he is one of those who enter paradise, He'll be treated as a visitor of the folks of paradise. Do you see? You may be jannati on account of some good deeds you have done, charity, salat. But if you're not been to Karbala for Zarat, because of that, your status in Jannat will be like a visitor. You'll be not considered as somebody who is a no uh, what companion or a sahib of Jannat, no? or a devil of Jannat, just because you're not been to Iraq, right? And then, in fact, the sixth Imam again, you know, the Hadith says, perform Ziyad of Karbala and don't omit it. That means don't miss it out. For indeed, the best of those of the sons of prophets is buried in it. The best of the sons of prophets. Indeed, the angels went to Ziyad of Karbala a thousand years before my grandfather, he says, right? Imam Hussein dwelled in it and not a night passes in which Jibreel and Mikhail do not go to his Ziyad. Oh, Yahya strive and hard to go that land. Maybe Imam was talking to his companion Yahya, so he's realizing that make sure strive hard to go to that land. Mominin, we are really fortunate. I was, I had been to Karbala during Saddam's time. There were so much restrictions and people used to fear so much. I remember when we went there, we were afraid that any time we would be you no, know, for example, in prison, or they would find excuse to refuse us. I was personally a witness on the day of Arbaeen. Listen to this. This is I'm telling you firsthand. I was a witness that they were on the day of Arbaeen. They had kept you no know, people with guns, right, with live ammunitions, just standing everywhere, even on top of the zari. There, they were there. And, and, and during that time, only the outsiders, we, for example, who I was come, going from Canada, people that come from, for example, from Africa, some people that come from America, and there were bodies who also had come, right? We were allowed to do matam, but that also slowly. So when we started doing matam, the local Iraqis joined us. And I saw myself that started just shooting, you know, from the, from the top of the, uh, that, you know, Balcony, they started shooting just to quieten the Shia, Shia you know, the Iraqis. So those were the days only a few years ago, before 2003. Now, alhamdulillah, things are open. So, Mominin, as Imam says, that you know, try to strive hard to go to Karbala. You are really fortunate and pray for others and see that if you can also help others go there, facilitate their going. Because, for example, say once in a four years' time, so for example, if you can go this year, you can still afford to go next year, then maybe you can try to ask somebody in your family members. If you know somebody, a family member, if you know a woman who has not been there, I remember I was visiting Dar Islam some years ago. So there was one young person who recited very beautifully, you know, that uh, Mercia, uh, that, uh, that Munajat, whereby I said, no, uh, that, oh Allah, give us uh, the ability to go and visit Karbala, no? All, uh, no, Bihakki Zahra, no? That I should visit the Zahra, uh, Karbala. Remember, there is a saying, those Munajat. He was saying, and he was so, saying so beautifully and so powerfully. It made me cry. Then I just talked to people. I said, this person was reciting this thing. Has he been to Karbala? They said, we don't think so. He can't afford. So I, I met few people who were rich. Some of my people whom I knew. I said, why don't you people just get together and sponsor his ziyarat. He's reciting so well, and every time he does that thing, you can see Allah has given good voice, and you know that he has not been to ziyarat, and you people can afford, 
why don't you sponsor? And they immediately like the idea. You know? So keep this in mind that you know, if you go to Ziyarat, for example, to Iraq often, at least once every four years, if Allah has given you, blessed with wealth, for example, then encourage family members, your friends, you know, to also go and visit Ziyarat. One more hadith, and I'm going to pose for question. The, you know, it is said, again, the same book, Kamil Ziyarat, Jibreel said to the Prophet, you know, a hundred thousand angels from every sky will descend and surround him, that means Gay of Mahmussein, every day and every night. They will invoke blessings on him. Circulate his grave, that means do the trap of his grave, sanctify Allah near his grave, that means you know, do the tasbih and uh, you know, the heed of Allah, and seek forgiveness for those who come to Ziyarat and record the names of those among of your ummah who seek nearness to the Almighty Allah and to you by going to Ziyarat. Do you see this thing? That when we go to Ziyarat, one of the one of the function is to seek nearness. You no. Know? We, even this day in the Ziyarat, Ashura we also made that we seek nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Ziyarat and through you know, Prophet and Imams. You know? That means we take Ziyarat, we can say, Ya Allah, since I've come to visit your beloved you know, servant, Imam Hussain, for the sake of this Ziyarat, for the sake of this visit, I would like to get near to you. And then once you are near to Allah, you can ask Allah for your hajat or try to pray to Allah to remove all the kind of you no know, bad habits we might have. Especially, you no know, one of the things we should do try to is that you know, that spirituality, that you no know, the salat and the good deeds should be able to change us. You now, so that completes the five slides. We still have, of course, twenty slides to go. But I will pause for a few minutes. If anybody has a question regarding what we have covered so far. You can just write your question in the chat box. Okay, it seems that there are no questions. So we'll continue, inshallah, no problem. We'll continue because we would like to cover as many slides as possible today, right? Again, this is the ayat of Quran. Taqwa of Allah is very important. Yes, there's a question from somebody, but I could not see it. Let me see. I could not see your question, Manik. I know that there was a message, there was a notification, but I could not see the question in any case. There's ayat of Quran which clearly says, no, and this ayat 197 of Surah Al-Baqarah, actually this was the ayat which talks about Hajj. But there's an important point which I'd like to mention here and connect with our discussion today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, in this ayat, Al-Hajj Ashrul Malumat, right? Hajj is actually performed on okay, I'll answer your question, inshallah, Shabir. You know, how much Shabir? Al-Hajj Ashrul Malumat, for man farda fihinna al hajja Fala Rafas Wala Fusuka, Wala Jidala fil Hajj, right? In this Hajj, we've been told that there are there is no argument and there is no uh, what uh, indecency, all those things. Allah says, Wama Tafalu Min Khairin. Whatever good you do, Allah knows it. Right? And then says, But just try to prepare, make provision for your trip. And the best provision is that of taqwa. Allah Matabatabai has a very good footnote there in Al Mizan. This is actually what I've taken is volume three, English volume three, page one and five. It is a reminder that one's actions are not hidden from Allah. As you are what traveling and you'll be going all this time, make sure that Allah is not oblivion, is not, is, your actions are not hidden. It calls one to piety and fear of Allah so that one's acts of worship might not be devoid of the spirit of devotion. Do you see these things? So when you go to Karbala and Najaf and Kazmain and Samarra, that is physically visiting the you know, Ziyarat places and, and performing Ziyarat. That is just the, the that is known as Ibadat, act of worship. But what Allah is saying, Allah is that make sure that you know, 
the spirit of devotion that what should ziyarat bring about what kind of change it should bring in you keep that in mind does it does it bring the internal change you will come to it inshallah we are going to there's a slide on that for example what kind of intention should help so that one's might not go through the external rites or worship with one's mind absent and one's heart forgetful don't be in the presence of Imam Hussein and then you are forgetting in your mind you are just so much worried about the rush people sometimes go there and see other people misbehaving so they start talking about it these people are you know what uh, unfair these people are for example ign uh, ignorant these people are jahil these people are not culture they start talking about people first of all don't forget everybody who is there is a zahir of Imam Hussein everyone who is there is a, actually a visitor from Imam Hussein you no know? so we can't say those things if people behave differently than you maybe you don't like their behavior but maybe they did not have that opportunity to go through the webinar as you are maybe they were never never the opportunity to be informed or taught about some of the etiquettes right maybe they never had those kind of chance no we were talking about how ziyarat is recommended but what about and why why it is recommended of course you no know, why is it recommended we, of course because ziyarat is recommended we are coming to it one as a slide you'll see but the simple answer of course is that this imam right they have given their life coming to imam sain and every imam has become shaheed just defending islam just not only defending islam when they were contributing about Islam, they gave their life, they gave everything they had for the sake of Islam, right? When we go there, we get inspired. Plus, we, we, we get, see, as we said earlier, we, get, we, we are able to seek nearness of Allah through them. So we can do this wasila even from far, but when you are near, right? And also it shows your commitment. So there are many benefits when you go for ziyarat that you, it shows a benefit it's like you're telling the Imam that, oh Imam, if you are living today, I would visit you. But now death has taken you away. You became Shaheed before even I was born. So although I'm you no know, thousand years after you or 14 years after you, but here I am today, my commitment. If you just now give me an order, if not you, that means when, you, when your grandson, grand, grand that means the 12th Imam gives me order, stand up Hussain and defend Islam. I will do that. That is my promise, right? So there are so many benefits uh, to Ziyarat and this is why it is there. And, th and that is why there is so much swar, right? That is why that we should go there. So keep in mind that Taqwa is must for your Ziyarat trip. No? As we proceed for Ziyarat, try to have piety. For example, if you enter in the Ziyarat, you'll find people are there, Maharam, Namaram. There are people, for example, you'll find young people, young women are there, right? Keep your, just your, your look should, your cast should be down. Don't try to have the wrong thoughts during your trip because you are on a holy trip. You know, I personally believe, this is only my belief, that your Ziyarat does not begin when you are just taking off on, 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 from your airport. Let's say if you are flying out of Toronto, if you are flying out from London, if you are flying out from Karachi. No. Actually, your ziyad started from the time you did the niyat. The day you did the niyat that I'm going for ziyarat, actually your ziyad started, right? And keep this in mind that the piety should always be there. It's a really great thing. We go to the next slide. All the slides with Arabic have been done that is amazing, surprisingly. This is the first time we are facing this thing. We have been using the system for long, but I think they updated the system. So something is happening now. Again, now when you go for ziyarat, brothers and sisters, you have a lot of time on you. You will go to the haram early in the morning, most of the time, so to, so to get a good spot, right? You'll go early in the morning. And because of that, since you've got time, Make sure that you don't miss out on Tahajjud Salat. Once you are going to Ziyarat, I would advise you that stop wasting your time doing other things. You know, for example, just checking your WhatsApp messages and then you know, being concerned about 
your family and business at home. No, just tell the family and, 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 and your people at business that only if there is emergency, then give me a call or then give me a text. No, otherwise, please let me have this 10 days, 12 days, depending how long you are gone. Let me have this. This is a special trip. It's a holy trip, right? Try to do that and then you will enjoy, right? So Allah says, those who spend the night for the Lord prostrating and standing, right? You'll be too enough, you know. So these are people who spend the night, no? People who have made it a habit and way of life to spend their nights for the Lord. Use of verb yabituna, that means they always spend their nights, right? Yabituna is a present tense, no? So these are the qualities, the people who have made a habit and way of life to spend their nights for the Lord. Connect this with the sacred hadith in which Allah informs Prophet Musa that a true lover is not heedless of God. By sleeping the entire night, we realize that they are true lovers. No? So, for example, if you really feel that you are near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not spend the entire night sleeping. Part of that you are going to sacrifice, wake up and say your, you know, uh, your tajud. That's why he says, you know, rabbihim for the Lord. To reveal, that reveals that they dedicate the night for the Lord. Allah has given you 24 hours a day. Just a few minutes give to him back, no? By just worshipping. The habit of being awake at night for prayer and worship shows that the divine training, al tarbiya al ilahiya This is a very good thing, the word, you know. It means a person has to get trained. You know, those of you who are saying namaz al regularly, you are fortunate. Those who are not, You'll be surprised last Ramadan, just this Ramadan, no? I was here and uh, just a day before Ramadan, I was given opportunity to talk in a community. I was there. And that day I said, since we are starting Ramadan, and it was last moment. So I thought, let me talk about the importance of Namaz al Believe me, trust me, when I talk about it, a person came to me. I don't know how old he is, but he is in the 60s, I'm sure. He said, thank you for your lecture. I'll inshallah start this practice. I've never said namaz e Somebody who is 60 plus has never said namaz e So there are people you can see, right? It is tarbiya ilahiya. That means you have to train yourself for divinely things. Some good practices, practices require training, dedication, right? Good background, good upbringing at home. All those things, you know, allows. That is why you can see on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussain, amongst the wasiyat given to be Zainab, says, Ya Ukhta, la tansini fi salatil layl. Oh, my dear sister, do not forget mentioning me, remembering me in namaz e right? Now, why would Imam Hussain say, knowing well that Janab Zainab will be in prison? Knowing well the Janab Zainab will be taken as a prisoner and being taken to Kufa and Sham. Why would Imam Hussain even ask such a kind of no favor? No, Mazat Tahajud is Mustal. You know why? Because one thing he knew that she is my sister and we have grown up in the same house. It has been a training in our family that we never miss Namaz Shab. So I'm sure that even Zainab, under all circumstances, would not miss that thing, right? Do you see this thing? And it's no wonder that that's what he's asking her from her, right? So it is the al tarbiya al yahiya That means it's a divine training. That means train yourself for divinely things, right? Number four, night is spent in prayer and worship. The phrase, sujjadun wa qiyama, alludes to this reality, you know? That means you try to spend the night in praying, right? The Holy Prophet in Zahlubayt who taught us specific prayers of the night and that would enable them to attain high levels of perfection. Such prayers are known as Nawafil Layl, which are perfect and obligatory prayers, right? Which are perfect, no, which perfect obligatory prayers. That means sometimes if our Vajib prayers are, you know, miss some kind of perfection, concentration, you know, quality, then these nafila prayers help to perfect them, right? And then, of course, the Holy Quran states that the one who observes such prayers can punish, potentially soar to the station of praise. Maqam Mahmudan. This is Maqam of the Prophet. Prophet had Maqam of Mahmud. No, a praised station, a 
praise status. Rasulullah had this. But do you know, you and me can also achieve that. How? Sunnah Mazah Shah. So not only that, and then also, I could not find the hadith just now, but I remember during my days when I was in Hawza, uh, we were told a hadith, which inshallah next time I'm going to add there. It says that don't miss out the nafila of Maghrib also. Never miss out the nafila of Maghrib. Maghribain both. No? So try to make sure that you don't miss out nafila of Maghrib and nafila of Isha. Nafila of Maghrib is also important as you are traveling. We go to the next slide. In fact, at the academy, we have published a book, the Hajj Salat. It's a small booklet, 235 pages. Every dua, every recitation, every tasbih, every istighfar to be recited is there in Arabic with English translation. So you can either get a printed copy or you can just download on your mobile phone. But keep in mind that in Iraq, I don't know because I've not been there for the last, as I told you, three years, inshallah, I'll be going this year. I don't know lettuce, but when I was there, they would not allow you to take your telephones to the haram on account of security. I'm sure that it is still the same case. Maybe somebody can just uh, correct me here. You can put, no. I think you cannot take your mobile phone to the haram. That being the case, the book will be good for you to get a book, right, of the Hajj Salah. But besides that, for example, you can use this uh, Hajjud app in Umrah or if you go to Mashhad or Qum for Ziyarat or Sham. I don't know about Sham also because there also there was a problem, right? There was a civil war. So we don't know about the security. I've not been to Sham for many years. So I don't know about that situation. But I know in Iraq, the Haram, they would not allow you to take your phone. But in any case, you should know that you can download the entire booklet you know, in a... Uh, interactive way of using this uh, Salat. It is all the du'as, it is also what recitations, audio files, everything is there. Keep that in mind. Before you leave for Ziyarat, these are some of the reflections which you to need to keep. The marifat of all the souls you are going to visit, the six Imams, Hazrat Abbas, Hazrat Ali Akbar, Hazal Yaskar, Janabe Hur, Janabe, you know, Habib bin Wazahir, right? You are going to visit the Shoda of Karbala. You are going to visit uh, Janabe, what, Janabe uh, the, the sons of uh, what, uh, Muslim in Akil, you are going to visit, right? In Musayyab, you, you will visit On Muhammad. You will find that some of these, you will visit them individually and try to read about them. Have the marifat of these Imams and this Shoda. That way you are going to appreciate that whom you are visiting and how great these people are and pray to Allah that, Ya Allah, I should, for example, let's say if somebody I can see among the people who are attending today are seniors, even senior than me. You can go there and as you are standing near the Zari of Habib ibn Mazayr, which is just near in Karbala, just in the Haram of Imam Sain, there is a Zari of Habib ibn Mazayr, right? You can hold that Zari and say to Allah that, Ya Allah, give me the ability you know, to practice, you know, what Habib Namazai was doing. That's such an old person, but how much dedicated and how much, uh, uh, what, uh, loyal companion he was to Imam Hussain, right? That Imam Hussain otherwise told everybody that you are allowed to go and leave me. Can you imagine also on the night of Ashura, Imam Hussain told people that I am freeing you of my bayat and you can go, right? But Habib ibn Mazayr was, was so special to Imam Hussain that he was not in Karbala. He was in Kufa. Imam sent a Qasid, a messenger, and then asked him to come. Now keep in mind, for a messenger to go to Kufa itself was dangerous. For Habib ibn Mazayr to leave Kufa and come to Karbala also was dangerous. He could have been caught and then imprisoned and killed by Ibn Ziyad Mal'un, right? Imam, Imam, in spite of that, wrote a letter to Habib Mazar to come. What does that tell you? He was so special to Imam Hussain, right? How good would be that if I stand near the Zadi of Habib Mazar and said, Ya Allah, I wish I can be 
a follow of Imam and can be a special, no, special Shia of Imam Hussein. I can be a special Hussein in that Imam would love to include me amongst his you know, followers. You know, this kind of things will help you when you read about them, right? I talked about Habib Mazar, all these things. So if you read about each of the Shaheed and their commitment and their uh, dedication, it will give you that kind of ability to talk to Allah, right? As you are near that Zari, that what kind of knowledge? So knowledge, manifold of the Holy Souls. There are Ziyarat, right? There are so many books of Ziyarat available online. I advise you to read the translations beforehand. That will give you an idea what we're excited because once you are there, you will not have time because of what uh, rush, which is there, especially Arbaeen. You know, Arbaeen is the, when you've got the most people visiting there, right? Between the the last 10 days, that means from, you know, uh, from the uh, first, uh, from the 11th of uh, what, uh, so Safar to 20th of Safar, between those 10 days, almost 15 million people visit you know, Imam Hussein, you know, local and also from overseas. You no. Know? So there will be a lot of rush, those who have not been there. For you to be able to read Zarat and translation that particular time may not be easy. But if you read beforehand, and then when somebody is reciting in Arabic or it's been recited in the mic, for example, then at least you can just recite the Arabic because you already recited the English. So you know what you are reciting. So it's very important that you recite Zarat translations with understanding, right? What if you were to visit them during this life? Ask this question. Ask yourself, what would happen if I were to visit Imam Hussein or Imam, Zain, or Imam, what, Ali, Imam Ali al-Islam or I were to visit Imam Jawad al-Islam or if I, if I were to visit, visit Imam al-Kazim al-Islam or Imam al-Askari or Imam al-Hadi during their lifetime, how different would I be? How different would be my, my, my akhlaq? How different would be my, my wearing of clothes? So in the same way, keep this in mind. If you are visiting Imam, there's a read, there's no difference. There's a hadith of the Prophet, which even the Sunnis believe. They say, Prophet says, Manzara fi ma'am, 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 Whoever is going to visit me after my death is like the one who visits my, in my life. No? So imagine that if you visit these Imams, they can see you there. You no, know? the Ru can see you there. So keep that in mind that as if you are visiting them, they are living. Total humility and reverence when nearing. Again, brothers and sisters, I told you I've been to Ziyarat a number of times. I've noticed this thing that people, once they reach near the Zari, they talk a lot. You now, when they see the people, when they see, for example, uh, the crowd, when they see the zari, a number of kind of things they start talking. Just forgetting for a moment that now you are in the presence of the imam. Stop talking, stop lecturing, stop, for example, everything else. Show your humility. Show your reverence and respect to the imam whom you are visiting. You know, how would you dare even open the mouth other than reciting ziyarat? or just praying to Allah, right? Or doing tasbih. So humility and reverence is very important. As I said, that as if you are visiting Imam is living there. Renewal of the pledge of the Imam. One of the person had asked why we go for ziyarat. This is one of the reasons. When you go for ziyarat, we go and renew our pledge, you know? Because every time we, for example, those of you, I don't know how many of you recite this dua, known as dua adila. Let me write for you here, okay? Dua Adila is a very important dua which we should recite, you know, if not every day, then at least once a week try to recite, in which we try to, you know, just uh, confess our beliefs in Allah and the Prophet and the Imams, right? Dua Adila is almost like that you are reciting a dua, talking in your own life, right? In Talqin, what is Talqin? Talqin is the, something similar to Adila, but somebody is reciting on your behalf. Here you're reciting yourself. In Talqin is a reminder about our belief, right? Here is that we confess our beliefs, no? Adila. So when you go to Imams, 
said, okay, I was remembering you when I was in Toronto. I used to remember you when I was in London. I used to remember you in every majlis. But now I am in your presence, Ya Imam Hussein, Ya Aba Abdullah, Ya Sayyid Shoda, I am in your presence. I've come to just extend my hand to you. But now, since I cannot extend, so what I'll do, I just extend my hand and touch the zari, right? You know, there is an interesting story in Mafat al Jinan, and I have no doubt that Sheikh Abbas must have taken care that there was once a lion, right, which had hurt itself. A lion had hurt himself. You know, so it was 15th of Shaban, as we mentioned earlier, 15th of Shaban, people go for ziyarat. Some of the Mumin had gone for ziyarat, you know, and when they went for ziyarat, they were surprised that there was a lion which was coming near the, the grave of Imam Hussain. So, of course, they moved. They said, maybe this has just lost the place or no, has, no it may hurt us. So, during those times, things were not built. They just went back. But then one of the, saints, one of the persons said, don't run away. Let's try to keep the distance and just try to uh, watch what's happening. And, you know, they were so surprised to see that this animal came near the grave of Imam Hussain and started rubbing the place where it had, it had injured itself. Would you believe it that even the animal had that, that understanding that this is the place I can get cured, right? So you and me who are the Shias of Imam, who adore the Imam, who keep the names of Imam and Imam children, Right, you go there and just extend your hand, holding the zari. You are renewing your pledge, pledge, your bayat to Imam. Right, keep that. Man. How can I change on account of my trip? Yeah, this is one thing. Always I ask myself when I go for Hajj, Alhamdulillah, I've been a number of times. When I go for Ziyarat, I've been a number of times. This is the question I ask myself, and that's what I'm sharing with you. That you just, all of you, should take a small note, or in your phone also notebook, just write. How can I change myself on account of my trip? When you come back a week after that, look at yourself and see that how you've changed. Has there been change in your attitude, in your you know, worship, in your ibadah, in your relation with your family? All those things, right? Try to see that how can they change? Ziyad is supposed to be the word change. Next will be the 10th slide, and again, I will no pause. Again, the Arabic in this today, every, all the Arabic has been no, messed up. No. On account of being a traveler and lacking good facilities, many pilgrims delay their daily prayers or sometimes even miss them. Mominin, it just doesn't make sense. I think most of you are going for ziyarat, it is Mustaf for you. The only people it is wajib is if you've done a nazar. If you don't nazar, for example, that if I pass my exam, if I rec recover from my sickness, or if my father, for example, uh, wins a case, whatever it is, you are facing a difficulty, a challenge in your life, and you nazar that if this happens, then I make it wajib for me to go for ziyarat, then that is will be wajib near, right? Otherwise, most of us is sunnah. How can you go for a sunnah act in the process you perform haram? In the process, you miss a wajib act. It just doesn't make sense. The sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq al Islam, says, Allahumma salli alayhi says, performing one hajj is better than the world and whatever is in it. And saying obligatory prayer is better than 1,000 mustab hajj. You imagine now. When you perform hajj, it's better than one, no, better than the world and whatever is it. No, if you just perform hajj, Whatever in this world, no, Hajj is better than that. And saying one obligatory prayer is better than 1,000 such Hajj. A Hajj which is better than this world and whatever it is in it. A Salat is no 1,000 such Hajj. No? You can imagine. So how will we miss that Namaz? Why would we, in fact, no, delay that Namaz? So keep that in mind. So this is the 10th slide. Any questions? Please, you can put that in the chat box now.
Very good question, yes. Only last, last night somebody left a message on my WhatsApp that uh, which are books should we read? The best website, of course, if you want English literature in, in, in for Shias, there is no better website than al-Islam, al-Islam.org. If you go to this site, al-Islam.org, and then if you just look at the you know, lives of the Masumin, there is a great scholar who died recently only. His name is Karashi. No. Sheikh Karashi has written detail, he's done details research on the lives of every Imam, all 12 Imams. Each Imam's book is almost, I think, 400, 500 pages. And these books are also available at Islam.org. Or you can even buy printed copy from Qum or from no, the big store here in Toronto, they have it now. So they have, you, you, this, is, this site has, you know, will find so much literature. You cannot go wrong. Try to go to this website, you can get about the Imams, also the companions, inshallah, you'll get there. No? It's the richest site. The right is the fight is so rich on Islamic literature, on Shia literature. Some years ago, I was visiting ICAS. I don't know if you know ICAS, Islamic College of Advanced Studies in London, right? I was visiting there and I saw that the professor there advised the students to visit this website. So imagine those who are doing your advanced studies of Islam. Even they were asked to visit alislam.org. No? So this is the website, you cannot go wrong. You go to the next slide. See what Ayatollah Sistani says. May Allah give him long life, long life, no? and may he continue guiding us. Some of you may want the opportunity to visit him, although during uh, Arbain he's very busy. There are some people who visit, but um, maybe some of your uh, no, kafila, your caravan may have arranged, for example, meeting with Ayatollah Sistani. If you do that, no, and if you remember, give my salams. His son personally knows me. But in any case, you know, he has a message for those who go for ziyarat. Actually, the youths went to him and said, give us some advice for ziyarat. There's a long message at the end, we'll give you the website also. He says it is one of the essential of this ziyarat that the pilgrim, that means the person who is ziyarat, Zaid, in addition to remembering Imam Hussein's sacrifices and devotion in the way of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the observers observes the teachings of Islam, including those relating to prayer, hijab, self-reform, right? Selflessness, that means you are not selfish, you try to selfless, and moral etiquette so that his pilgrimage may be a step towards developing the training of the soul. Remember we said earlier about taqwa, but the same, for accepting these and consolidating their effects until the next pilgrimage. In other words, this Ziyana trip should prepare you spiritually in a way that you've got enough charge until next Ziyana or next Hajj or next Umrah. Do you see this thing? Keep that in mind. So he says, don't overlook this thing. Again, I said about it, right? you go to the ziyarat, you'll find there are women there, men for example, or there are men, right? Some of them, unfortunately, don't dress properly, which is not right, but what can you do? This is a free world. People just dress they want. Then the ziyarat, even then, they sometimes are not dressed. They don't keep their hijab properly. They dress tight clothes, unfortunately, right? And there are people who are young. Shaitan may, for example, you know, what, uh, try to... Uh, distract you, try to keep away from those things. You no, know? Allah says that you should not compromise in these things. You no, know? for example, you'll find that as the time of food, there are tables you go and collect the food. Tell the organizer of your of your program. For example, if there are many pilgrims, let there be two tables: one table for ladies, one table for gents. If there is a smaller group, tell them, okay, let ladies finish. And then the men will go and go, go and take the food. No, but we don't want to stand to eat next to each other and interact. Now I don't want, for example, that I'm behind a woman and then there's a man behind a woman behind me and there's a man behind me. All those things doing that, I don't want those kind of things, right? I want to stay. So keep this in mind. No hijab and self-reform. That how can I change myself? Selflessness. No, 
just when you use, for example, washroom, right? When you use, for example, certain things, you are sharing the room. Try to be selfless. No, don't, for example, just say that what is the best for me and you occupy that. No. Akhlaq, your akhlaq, more etiquette. So Allah is still saying, telling us, keep this in mind as you go for ziyarat. Especially, as we said earlier also, right? Allah says, fear Allah in relation to your prayers. As stated in the hadith, it is the pillar of your religion. You know, I, I wanted to add here, but we didn't have time today as I was preparing. It says, there's a hadith, right? Prophet says, as-salat umud al-deen. Prayer is the pillar of religion. In qubilat, qubila ma siwaha. If prayer is accepted, then other actions are accepted. In ruddat, ruddat ma siwaha. Subhanallah. If my prayer or your prayer is rejected, the other deeds, for example, ziyarat we are going, other good deeds, the you know, charity, you know, being good to your neighbors, helping the poor, helping the needy, right? You may be doing so many good things in your life, all those things will not be counted. It says in Ruddat Ruddamas, if prayer is rejected, other things are rejected because of that. No? So it says it is the pillar of religion and the ascension of the believer. If it is accepted, all other acts will be accepted. If it's rejected, all other acts of worship will also be rejected. Again, you can, this is Hadith, but Aha is repeating it. So what Aha is telling us that the Hadith, which is what is found in Hadith, is a correct thing. That if prayers are rejected, then other deeds are rejected. That means even Ziyarat is rejected, right? You can imagine. It is befitting for believers to offer their prayers on time because Allah loves those who rush to prayer as soon as they hear the call for it. The moment Azan is said, leave aside everything. And in your case, because you are going for ziyarat, brothers and sisters, don't start preparing for namaz five minutes before that. You may be near the haram, but because of the rush, you need a half an hour. You need 40 minutes to prepare. Honestly, you'll be surprised. No, You may be so near, but because of security and other things and rush, you need time to prepare yourself to be start to be able to start your prayers on time. Okay. Allah continues, see what he says. It is not appropriate for a believer to engage in any of the other acts of worship in the prime for prayers because prayer is the best form of obedience to Allah. At the time of namaz, nothing else is important, he says. Leave aside everything else at the time of namaz. No. It has been narrated from Imam al -Bayt, no, peace be upon them, that they said our intercession, Shafar, will not be won by the, that person who is not, depreciates or un, undervalues the prayer. We must know that if we act upon their advice, it is hoped that we shall be rejected and along with their friends. That means if you want on the day of judgment to be raised with Hadul Bayt, then Allah says that act in like your advice. Because it has been reported by Imam Ali saying that in the Battle of Jamal, today we are accompanied by those who are still in the loins of their fathers and uterus of their mothers. You can imagine, in the Battle of Jamal, Imam is saying that not only those soldiers who were with him, even the Shias who were to be born, you and me who were to be born, we were there with Imam in Jamal, Imam says. Not those, because those who follow the practice of Imams. So we are still with them. And this slide will be posted on, on our website, inshallah, by tomorrow or by Monday, inshallah, because tomorrow is the holiday. This is done by volunteers. So inshallah, on, on uh, Monday when you post, you'll, you'll have the, all these slides and all the recording. But you can see we have also given you the, the link where you can re read the entire message of al -Rasistani. One of the main purposes of Zarat, Hassan bin Ali Washha reports that he heard Imam al saying, for every Imam there is a covenant on the neck of his friends and the followers of Shi and, and, and their followers, that means on the Shias, Shias there, is no, there is a covenant on the, on the neck of the Shias. The best and complete way to fulfill this covenant is to visit their graves. So you can see on our neck there is a pledge. There is a covenant, there is a covenant, there is an Ahad Nama on our neck. One way to fulfill this Ahad Nama, to pledge, is by visiting the graves. For example, if I pledge $50 for a fund, then the only way I can 
finish that pledge is by giving the $50 to the treasurer, right, for that fund. In the same way that for us to fulfill this pledge of Imam is by visiting their graves. One who goes there with a sincere desire of visiting them and with conviction, with belief, then the Imams will intercede on their behalf on the day of resurrection. Keep in mind that you are going all the way to Karbala, to Najaf, to Kazamin. No, Imam is going to also visit us in our grave. Some of the etiquettes, right? There are many etiquettes. In fact, the book of Al Jinan has so many etiquettes, but we are just mentioning only a few. If possible, travel on select days. Before, be better to travel on Saturday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Now, mind it, of course, in this case, you have no choice sometimes. If you are going with a group, then the group leader has decided when you are going to travel. But if you are going, for example, let's say you are going to meet your group in Istanbul. You are going to meet your group in uh, in Dubai. You are going to meet your group in uh, Baghdad. At least from here to Baghdad, from here to Dubai, from here to Istanbul, you are going on your own, right? Try to choose a day whereby, you know, it is either you know, Saturday or Tuesday or Thursday. We have been asked to avoid traveling on Monday, on Wednesday, and Friday before Juma prayers, right? Otherwise, you can travel. Fast for three days is Muster. Fasting on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is Muster, okay? Before going for your ziyarat. See some of the recommended du'as. There are du'as you've been asked to recite, right? Recite those things for the suffer. We are now slide number 16. Any questions? Okay, so let's continue because almost 75 minutes we've been talking, so let's try to continue. This is very important, brothers and sisters. I often see this particular thing overlooked by, by Zawar, by pilgrims. Don't try to undermine any other pilgrim. You know, he or she has the same right. He and she is also Mehman of the Imam, like you. The fifth Imam says, it does not matter if one visits his house, if he does not possess three plates. That means even if you visit Khan Kaaba, it doesn't matter you know, who you that you have been visiting Khan Kaaba. As long as if you don't have these three 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 qualities, then you no, know, there is no special uh, no value for you. Cautiousness which prevents him from sinning, that means taqwa, to avoid from sinning. Forbearance which helps you to rule over his anger. Remember, you earlier also said those five qualities. And then good interaction with those who are with him. It's very important that we have these things. That we do not, for example, when we do interact with people, we are careful with them, right? The sixth imam says, you should be a good companion to those who come accompany you. Speak less. Say only that which is good. Mention Allah increasingly. Wear purified clothes. You know, put on perfume. Do ghusl before going to holy places. Be humble. Establish of a lot of prayers. Say salawat. Help needy ones. And not look, you know, that thing which is forbidden, right? So you can see, clearly mention what we should do. We pray to Allah that may Allah give us tawfiq to follow this beautiful hadith and this beautiful instruction from the imam. The seventh imam says, whoever prays for his brothers in belief, in his absence, is called from the throne. Or there is a call from the throne is saying, O servant of Allah, you will have 100,000, no, 100,000 times as much reward as one may receive for this prayer. So when you pray for others, then you also receive 100,000 times. So you are going, people will tell you, please remember us in Karbala, remember us there. Take a footnote or take, for example, to, uh, what a notebook or just on your phone, mention it. Because that gives opportunity to pray for others. Now this is, I'm sure many of you have already watched this thing, but in case not, just watch this thing. There is on YouTube, you know, whereby we have shown how to perform wudu with a spray bottle, which is less than 100 milliliters. The benefit of this is 
that if you perform wudu, say for example, whilst you are flying, or if you perform wudu, you are sitting completely in the front, right? And then you cannot go out. So have a spray bottle with you while sitting on your musalla, on your sajada, on your prayer mat, you can perform the wudu. I have done this thing also in Hajj and nobody objected. Even the Wahhabi is sitting there, they did not say, oh, you are, sleeping, what, you are spilling water because when you use the spray bottle to perform wudu, you can only spill a few drops here and there, but not water. So nobody will complain, for example, that you are messing up. Right? So keep this in mind. You can do this thing, right, and then continue staying there so that you don't miss your sport, but you don't have to go out all the way and just perform wudu. Try to look at it. No, and these are some of the points keep in mind and how to perform. So please have a look at it if you're not this video. And if you have any questions later on, you can ask us now or also you can email us now. Sing Salat on board, right? It is important that you read this. I'm not going to get in detail whether if anybody has question, but I'm just going to pause for a minute or two. Just read this slide. It gives you idea that how to say your namaz on board. If you are going up and flying from here to Vancouver, Toronto to Vancouver, and then, for example, your prayers has to be said before it gets Kaza. You're not saying your prayers, you would like to say your prayer before it gets Kaza. Then know how to do that. So please try to read this slide. If any questions, you can ask. This slide and also the next slide, no? It's just on the, uh, no. So I'm going to just go back to the first slide, pause for a minute, then I'll go to the second slide and ask you to read that. And if any questions, please ask. This is regarding saying prayers on board, that means on an aeroplane. We are going to the next slide. I hope you have read no. And these will be available to share on our website, on our website, academyofislam.com. Now, if you just, on, on Monday, if you just go to this, uh, this link, if you go to this link on Monday, inshallah, you'll find these slides and also recording what we are recording just now. Any questions, any clarifications? Okay. So keep in mind that you don't miss your namaz or delay your namaz just because you are flying. Those of us who are flying from North America, there are long haul flights, and most of the time, maybe the prayer is at, you know starts and ends whilst you are flying. So you have no choice but to say namaz. So keep these notes what you have got just now, how to say prayers, that you are aware of that. Don't, for example, some people just say that you know, Allah is fully aware. It's difficult to keep the taharat while while traveling. It's difficult to say prayers while traveling, so I will just make it kaza. I'll go up there and do what is tikfar and just repay my namaz. That's not acceptable. No, we cannot, by delaying namaz or missing namaz is haram. We cannot perform haram act whilst performing a mustab of going zara. Okay. Again, this is also a slide on saying namaz on board. Now, a very important point here I would like to make. Scholars differ on whether one should say prayers in the aisles, washrooms, or serving corners you know, at the end of the plane. Now, for example, you know, if you go to the plane, at the end they, there are corners where they serve you. So when, is the, when they're not serving, there's a lot of space there, right? Now, where should we say our prayers? You know, many scholars believe, including Malana Rizzi, who is here in Toronto, he says that, you no, know, you can just say your prayers 
from your seat where you are sitting there. Just stand up for Takbir Tehran, just turn towards the Qibla at that time and just sit down. No? Some scholars believe that no, you ask the you know, what uh, steward or stewardess, no, to just tell her that no, I would like to say my prayers. Can I use the big place? If they allow you, fine. No, if they don't, just be seated. No? Some people even go to extreme. Some scholars I've heard honestly, even just as 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 late as this Hajj. When I was at Hajj, one of the scholars told me that some of the planes have got big washrooms. You no, know, so you can just clean it and say namaz there. I've never done that, and I personally don't feel that that is required. No, but some people somehow say that no, you cannot miss namaz. You can just say namaz while sitting on your seat. No. And just follow the instructions we have put in this. Now, regarding what, which kind of salat you have to say in Iraq, complete prayers or just, you know, kasa namaz. A traveler can perform tamam, Arasistani says in his book, Islamic Laws. A prayer can perform tamam prayers. You no. Know? In the entire city of Mecca, Medina, and Kufa, and in the shrine Haram of Imam Hussein, right? Up to a distance of approximately 11.5 meters, you know, and this known is high. So when it comes to Mecca, Medina, and Kufa, the entire Mecca, entire Medina, and Kufa, you can send them out. In Karbala, only near the higher, that means from the grave of the Prophet, Imam Hussein. 11.5 meters around it, you can say your namaz, you know, there, for example, full namaz if you want in Karbala, if you are near the high. Otherwise, you have to say Kasa namaz. Keep this in mind. So this is regarding the higher. Then it says, if a traveler who has not performed prayers arrives at his hometown before the time of the prayer has expired, or he arrives at a place where he wants to say, stay for 10 days, he must perform tamam prayers. And if he did not perform tamam prayer at all time, and then you begin your trip, in that case, you will say kasar prayers on your trip. Okay, This is regarding questions regarding the prayers, right? It says, clearly says that when to say kasar namaz, when to say full namaz, right? So these are rulings, keep in mind. Praying full in Iraq. Where can you say full in Iraq? In the heart of Imam Hussein, in the high, higher. Higher and say 11.5 meters around the grave, right? Masjid the Kufa. If you're not sure higher, you can ask the people there. No mutawalli, those are there. Okay. Is this area higher? Then you can say full namaz. If you're not sure, the best thing is say kasa namaz. If you're less than 10 days. 10 days in Karbala which may be the case with most of us, right? Masjid al-Kufa, rather than praying full Najaf, right? But Masjid al-Kufa also, you can see the entire Namaz. Even if you just go for one day, you can see the entire, entire city of Kufa. You can say the entire Namaz. Now, if you, let's say that you are raising Masjid al-Kufa during Zohrain, you are allowed to say full four Namaz, four Rakat and four Rakat, right? One prayer is equal to 1,000 prayers in Masjid al-Kufa. The reward of saying one namaz while the kufa is equal to 1,000 prayers. But one wajib prayer is equal to hajj, one hajj with the prophet, one mustahab prophet, one mustahab prayer umrah with the holy prophet, right? So if you say a wajib prayer in the kufa, you get the reward of as if you are saying doing hajj with the prophet. If you say a mustahab namaz in masjid al-kufa, you get the reward of doing umrah with the prophet. No. Kufa is not another city of Najaf, no. But outside city of Najaf, there is Kufa, no. You'll find that, no. Of course, once you are Najaf, you can visit Kufa from there by the cave, no. But Kufa is you know, a city on its own, you'll see. No? So just keep in mind. Then, one Wajib prayer is equal to like doing Prophet of the Hajj, and one Mustafa prayer is doing Mustafa with the no, Mustafa prayer. Do Umrah with the Prophet, right? If people were to know its merits, they would come to it crawling. The sixth Imam says, six I mean sixth Imam. 
if people were to know the merits of saying in Masjid Kufa, they would come to eat in crawling. That means, even, for example, God forbid some of you, one of us cannot walk or does not have a wheelchair, he or she would crawl to go to Masjid Kufa because the reward Imam says. No? Special prayer of Hajat in the middle of Kufa. If you go to Masjid Kufa, there are amas that will make you perform. There is a special place known as middle, middle of Kufa. You recite a special namaz there, right? 1,000 prophets and 1,000 awsiyah, that means vicegerents of the prophets, have prayed in Masjid Kufa. So keep that in mind. It will be the venue of prayer for the 12th Imam. Even the 12th Imam is going to say the prayer there. You know? Masjid Sala considered as part of Actually, Masjid Al-Sala is also considered as part of Kufa. So if you go to Masjid Al-Sala, because Kufa has expanded so much that now it is part of Kufa. And that is why if you go there, most of the time you go there in the evening. So you can say Isha Namaz with complete Isha Namaz in, in Masjid Al-Sala. Keep that in mind. Now, the last two slides are just about walking. I believe that many of you may be even walking to Karbala from Najaf, which is a good thing. Keep in mind, this was also banned. When I went during Saddam's time, I remember that people used to walk at night. People would walk as if they are just, for example, going out for farming, and that's how they would walk. In the daytime, they would be caught, they would be imprisoned, they would be stopped, right? But nowadays, actually, not only that you can walk, there are all the facilities you can think of, food, resting place, water, washrooms, western, eastern washrooms, an Anashid, Mercia, Matam, you know, you just can think of, you no, know, everything is there on the way to Karbala from Najaf. You just cannot, what is needed is just yourself with a good concentration, with a good mind. If you just go there, with a good mind, you will find that this is you no know, something very special. So try to walk, right? And these are some of the points we have again put there. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. This is the first slide. Why are you walking? Question. Okay, keep that in mind. Imam Zainab, Imam Zainab, 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 and in fact, you know, the caravan were made to walk to Karbala, right? To, to, to Kufa and to Sham from Karbala. They were made to walk sometimes, no? So we are just trying to imitate this thing that, no, OBB, you were made to walk. We are also walk, walking, but now we are walking with all pride. We are walking with no happiness. We are walking with visiting your, your brother, no? Traveling light during walks. They will advise you, okay? This is a small thing. Don't be concerned about having delicious food and snacks. Keep this in mind. I'm so much disturbed. So often I get you know, WhatsApp messages that you can get so and so kind of food on this mo in this mokip. At this pole, you will get, for example, uh, cheap and uh, fish and chips. In this pole, you'll get, for example, chana barita. In this pole, we are not going to eat this kind of things. We are not going for there, no. So even the, promoting this kind of things is not right. Yes, people who are mokip who are running the mokip. They would like to give you the best of food because you are Zawar of Imam Hussain. That is fine. But back of your mind, that should not be the concern. What you need, of course, is food to have the strength and ability to walk. Keep that in mind. Okay. So not only that, in fact, try to avoid taking even meat we have been told in Karbala, right? So if possible. Drink a lot of fluid. The best word, of course, there's a hadith which says the, the best of the drinks is water, right? There's, there's so much, you know, even uh, water as a, as, a, as a master, and the best master of water is, you know, the best thing to drink is water compared to tea and juice and other things, right? Essential include underclothes, remain, all these things, of course, I'm not going to mention, I'm sure you know about this thing, there are no. Some people try to offer money to the mokibs. They get offended. So if you do it, if you want to do it, do it very discreetly. 
just ask, for example, through an interpreter that I would like, if you go to a monkey, you like their services, you like their setup, you like their, for example, uh, you know, akhlaq, you like their uh, invitation, right? So you want to help them out. Do it very discreetly. Don't offer money. Don't, for example, take money and give them. They feel offended about that. No, they, they, they gather the money the entire year just to sow the zawar of Imam Hussain. So if you have to do it, do it very discreetly. You can ask somebody that have some donation. Would the person accept it? Would the owner accept it? If not this year, the next year, you can do that, right? But do it very discreetly. Otherwise, they feel offended. Keep in mind. When you are walking, try to do a lot of zikr. No. Keep that in mind. Just do a lot of zikr. This is the last slide, which is all the references, additional material. Any questions? Again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this opportunity to conduct this annual webinar for those who are heading for Ziyarat. Mumineen, this is no, this is no what, uh, condition, this is just a request. If you happen to go for Ziyarat, and if you remember, please remember us there, in your ziyarat, remember the academy that you can continue serving. But this is no obligation of you remember, no. Well, I'm not sure because you know, we are still in the month of Muharram. Let us wait till when the suffer is declared in Iraq. Keep in mind that when is the 20th of uh, what suffer in Iraq, and then you have to see that when you are going to reach Karbala. So keep in mind, if you find that you are running short of time, what you can do, you can even walk the last 10 kilometers. Okay, you can do that. Take, for example, a ride or a cab, you know, from Najaf all the way, and then just get down, and then you can just take 10, 10, 10 for example, 10 kilometers. If you are running short. Any questions, any clarifications? I'll still be there for two, three minutes for, to answer any questions. You can now also ask questions relating to your own situation. I don't mind now. Okay, since there are no questions, I'll take your permission. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these efforts. May Allah give us opportunity to visit Imam Hussain and other Aima. The only point I would like to make here before I end, brothers and sisters, before you leave, is that if you go to Iraq, Try to always plan going to Iran, which is so near, especially if you are flying from Europe or from North America. There is so much sawab of also going for Zayat of Imam Raza in Mashhad. Let me just tell you only one thing, that the reward of visiting Mashhad is more than the reward of visiting Karbala. Okay, so keep that in mind, that try to, in fact, also visit Mashhad and Sham, or Mashhad and also Qum, if you can do that. May Allah accept the effort.